The place was business as usual, but suddenly a black car appeared, followed by a police car. Inside the black car was what appeared to be a fully armed and strategically clever robber. After escaping most police pursuits, he was on a deserted road, still pursued by an inspector and two police officers in a car. Somehow, after going through the tunnel, the robber's car suddenly split in half and the front half disappeared. The inspector said that if this robber was diabolic, he was the most difficult robber to catch. Months after the incident, government leaders were seen gathering for an event. Soon came a beautiful woman named Eva Kant. She seemed very welcomed and highly respected by many. During their conversation, they also discussed a robber named Diabolik. In fact, Diabolik is already known for its ferocity, which causes fear and terror in the community. After the incident, Eva returns home alone, but when she returns home, she is suddenly approached by the inspector who previously tried to apprehend Diabolik. His name is Ginkgo. He asked her to talk to him for a minute. From there, I was told that Eva, who had just arrived from South Africa, had a red diamond and the price was very good. Ginkgo said that Diabolik must be plotting something to steal Eva's red diamond. Eva didn't believe it at first. Because she just came to the city two days ago and probably no one knows her lover. But Diabolik was a very smart man and he had many informants. He never showed his face, so it could be anyone. Ginkgo promised to send a number of guards to keep them safe. He deliberately used Eva as a decoy to capture Diabolik. On the other side of the hotel, several hotel stewards were seen talking about Eva's personal bodyguards, one of whom was appointed as a bodyguard. Somehow Diabolik managed to eavesdrop on the conversation. A butler named Roberto returned home from the hotel, but suddenly Diabolik appeared and immediately threw a hand-throwing knife from behind and stabbed the man. Diabolik then returned to his seat and heard Roberto speak repeatedly, which he said to himself in an attempt to imitate it. The next day, while the hotel manager was desperately looking for Roberto, something surprising happened. Roberto appeared from behind him as if by magic. It turns out that Diabolik had disguised himself as Roberto by wearing a face mask that looked exactly like Roberto's and copied the way he spoke. Finally, I started working as Eva's exclusive servant. As Eva entered her room, Diabolik quickly followed her and prepared her bathtub for her Eva. He then realizes that Eva is getting a call from someone named Giorgio. He's the rich man in town and plans to set up a meeting with Eva later that night. Somewhere else, a wealthy woman named Elizabeth arrived at her house with a sad face because her husband had always left home. But when Elizabeth arrived, she saw that her husband had returned. Surprisingly, the husband was Diabolik, who was about to leave again. Meanwhile, Eva meets with Giorgio, who turns out to be her fiancé. Giorgio is shown to be very expressive when he meets Eva, and Eva begins to get angry with him, but behind the scenes of that encounter Diabolik attempts to break into Eva's vault, but suddenly Eva appears first. I came to her room and saw that her safe had been successfully opened. Diabolik, who was there, took cover and ambushed him from behind. Oddly enough, Eva didn't seem surprised at all. Instead, she said the red diamond was a fake and that she had already sold the real one. Diabolik was surprised by this. Not only was she telling her truth, but she was not afraid of him. She went even further and nearly kissed Diabolik, but that didn't happen as Diabolik walked away quickly. The red diamond was also hijacked by Diabolik. On the way back to her lair, Eva manages to get Diabolik to think about who Eva really is, and when he arrives at the secret lair, he proves that the red diamond he brought with him is actually a fake. I did. Elizabeth couldn't sleep in her room because her husband hadn't come home yet. But she awoke for a moment, and when she looked in her bedroom window, suddenly a man came out from under the dirt in the garden. Elizabeth immediately went downstairs to see who was there. She took a few steps when she heard a man walking up the stairs, and it was Diabolik. It turns out that Diabolik had a lair just below the garden. The next day, Eva wakes up in her hotel room because Roberto enters the room and puts a breakfast tray on her bedside table. She opened it and found a red diamond ring in the breakfast. From then on, Eva quickly recognized that Roberto was a diabolic, so Eva immediately signaled Roberto, who immediately opened his face mask to reveal his real diabolic face. She turns out that Eva was really in love with diabolic. Elizabeth, meanwhile, searched the courtyard for the entrance to the cellar she had seen last night. Luckily for her, Elizabeth managed to find the door. 
Driven by her mixed feelings of fear and curiosity, she descended into her room. When she entered the room, she discovered all of the secret life her husband had hidden from her. There was a sculpted face mask with the gear Diabolic used in action. She was so shocked that she immediately called the authorities. Meanwhile, in a hotel room, Eva suddenly has a deep relationship with Diabolic. She asked Eva who she was the real Diabolic, but Diabolic was no fool. He still kept his secret. On the contrary, when asked about Giorgio, Eva answered without hesitation that he was her fiancé, but Eva did not love Giorgio at all. She hates Giorgio because he had Eva's card, but she couldn't do anything against him. Eva had to accept it. Without any suspicion, Eva asked Diabolic to seek out and remove the ace card that Giorgio used to tamper with her. She even asked Diabolic to kill Giorgio if necessary. Diabolic was also fascinated by Eva's beauty and accepted her request. On the other hand, the police called by Elizabeth go straight to her house with Chief Ginko. Meanwhile, Giorgio, worried that her fiancé will run away, immediately calls the hotel manager to ask how Eva is doing. The manager immediately went looking for Roberto, who had disappeared an hour earlier. The manager immediately went to Eva's room and knocked on the door. When Eva hears a knock on the door, she asks Diabolic to hide in the closet. When the manager entered the room, he immediately asked Eva for permission to search, and Eva allowed her to search. She then distracted the manager by telling him to start the search from the bathroom to buy Diabolic time to escape. Let's go back to Inspector Ginko, who entered Diabolic's hideout. Police found several masks that Diabolic often used. Knowing all this, Ginko asked all officers to stand by and prepare to capture Diabolic while Diabolic himself heads to another secret base not far from there. At that time, Diabolic took away a box containing Giorgio's biometric information. It was known that Giorgio was a member of the government. Then he made Giorgio's face mask. As soon as I finished work and drove home, Ginko was already on standby. Ginko ambushes them as soon as they slowly infiltrate the base and turn on the lights in the room, but Diabolik's plan is not exhausted yet. He manages to escape from there, but is arrested by another police officer upstairs. Elizabeth, on the other hand, couldn't believe what she was seeing and was appalled when her husband was arrested. The next day, Eva waited for Diabolik at the restaurant to tell her what to do next, but he still didn't show up as he had been arrested. Some time later, Eva was quite surprised when she saw the news of Diabolik's arrest in the newspaper. Shortly thereafter, Diabolik's trial begins. Eva came there wearing her hat. Eva tapped her finger on her cheek several times, giving Diabolik Morse code, trying to tell him what she could do to help him, but Diabolik answered a few moments later, returning to Eva. Only when I told her that I could go to a place and give her something. Some instructions. That night, Eva followed Diabolik's instructions and immediately got into her car and headed for the secret base. Eva was then instructed to bring two tubes of strange liquids, a green and a yellow liquid, and some cash. The next day, after it was announced to the public that Diabolik would be formally executed, Eva came to see Giorgio instead. Of course, Giorgio, who loved her Eva dearly, warmly welcomed her arrival immediately. Eva then challenged Giorgio to prove her love for Eva. She only asked for one thing, and that was to take him to her meeting with Diabolik on the night of her execution. I didn't mean it at first, but I decided to do it to prove my love for the woman of my choice. That night, Eva and Giorgio went to prison and asked the warden to take them to Diabolik. Eva and Diabolik's plan ultimately went according to plan. A lot of time has passed since then, and no one knows what happened, but what is clear is that while Diabolik was in prison, she never spoke or made a single expression. Is. When the death sentence was announced the next day, Diabolik was expressionless and silent. When it was raining, the police and Inspector Ginko were there to witness the death sentence. Sensing Diabolik's anomaly, Ginko tried to stop the executioner, but it was too late. The guillotine had already decapitated Diabolik. However, who would have guessed that the one who was decapitated was not the real Diabolik, but Giorgio wearing a Diabolik mask, and that Diabolik wearing Giorgio's face had already disappeared? Uka it turns out that Diabolik and Eva were planning something behind all this. It was to trick Giorgio into obeying Diabolik's every command through the liquid Eva injected. In addition, Diabolik elicited some information from Giorgio. It turns out that he kept all his treasures in a bank vault on the outskirts of town, and kept the key to that safe in his office safe. 
After gathering all the necessary information, he replaced Giorgio's face with Diabolik's mask and successfully left prison. Returning to Ginko's story, Ginko knew that the decapitated person was not a demon. He planned a strategy to further pursue Diabolik's objectives. Meanwhile, in Giorgio's office, Diabolik has been seen breaking into a safe full of papers and robbing one of them. Among them are confidential documents about Eva and the key to Giorgio's vault full of gems and diamonds. He told her that she had to leave her house, but after hanging up her phone, her secretary went to Giorgio's office in her place, while Diabolik himself stayed there all the way. Was gone. Eva was waiting for him downstairs. Diabolik realizes that Ginko already knew he was alive. Nevertheless, he intended to continue robbing Giorgio's diamonds. However, when Ginko and several police officers go to search Giorgio's office, they coincidentally discover that the secretary is still there. Ginko then asks what Giorgio put in the safe. He lied that his secretary knew nothing. Luckily Ginko released the secretary, but he didn't do anything. He quickly looked around and saw something that might be informative. I was lucky then. One of the officers found a secret file behind the bathroom cabinet. An inspection revealed that the documents contained classified information about some government officials. Finding this information, Ginko begins planning to find and capture Diabolik. In another, a woman was seen arriving at a bank. A woman was trying to store an expensive painting in a bank vault. Bank vaults consisted of three parts and had a very thick and complicated security system. Some are made of hollow iron, and if anything touches them, the bank's alarm will go off and no one can walk through it. Second, two keys were required to open the safe itself. One was the bank key and the other was the owner's key and had to be opened at the same time. Furthermore, the custodian revealed that she was the only one who could open the vault door. Meanwhile, at the police station, Ginko is seen revealing scandalous confidential files of government officials. Ginko gave away the files for free in exchange for his cooperation. Later, Ginko and one of his colleagues discovered new information. So Diabolik would definitely rob a bank again, but probably in another city because the key to Giorgio's vault was lost. Returning to the woman at the bank to unearth information about the vault, it turns out that Eve is in disguise. She told Diabolik all the details about the bank's security system, from the vault security system to when the bank closed. As the bank closed at 5 p.m., a box placed inside the vault suddenly emitted a laser beam, allowing the vault door to be pried open. Since then, Diabolik has quickly taken over. He created several tools for piercing the layers of safes. Diabolik then explained how to enter the vault to empty all of Giorgio's treasures. He accessed the vault through a manhole leading to the bank. It took a long time for him to break into the bank's security system and use a self-made tool to open the safe without sounding the bank's alarm, after which he opened the drain cover and you'll want to drain the entire safe later. Power supply for flood and vault surveillance cameras. Meanwhile, Giorgio's secretary returns to the office and goes to the restroom to retrieve the confidential files he had deliberately hidden there. Of course, this could be judged on the spot by the police. Ginko then took his secretary to his room and immediately asked what was missing in Giorgio's small safe. Her secretary, who knew she was cornered, told her that the keys to the bank vault had disappeared from there. Ginko immediately devised a plan to capture Diabolik, but of course Ginko was extremely careful. He didn't want everyone to know his next move. Meanwhile, Diabolik took action on his own, but he wasn't with Eva. She was told to wait at her home. The bank's warden then noticed that the dike's channel had broken and sounded the alarm. They contacted the bank manager, who then called the fire department. Luckily Diabolik manages to be late when the bank manager suddenly leaves for the bank. Well, a dispute broke out between the bank's security department and the fire brigade. They didn't know what to do as the safe could only be opened by the custodian himself. On the other hand, Diabolik's plan was progressing smoothly without anyone knowing. Time passed, and Ginko went to the bank with his men. After being briefed on the situation, Ginko immediately asked the city's police to close all access roads around the bank. Soon after, the manager finally came, but Eva, who was at home, could only wait, worried about Diabolik. Everyone was wondering how to catch Diabolik. The problem was that when the vault door opened, the person who opened it could be hit by water, possibly flooding the entire coast. Ginko finally decided to wait for Diabolik to come out on his own. Thinking that if Ginko came out from outside, 
he would definitely come out through the underground water system, he also had guards near some manholes on the coast, as heavy guards from the outside were ready to arrest him. Staff were stationed. Meanwhile, Eva grows tired of waiting and eventually decides to go out and help clear an escape route for Diabolic. Meanwhile, Diabolic has managed to rob Giorgio of his jewelry and belongings. After that, he left as soon as possible. Luckily for Diabolic, his escape route had already been cleared by Eva, so he only had to deal with the rest of the guards, but unfortunately, unfortunately, Ginkgo suddenly found himself there. And shot Diabolic in the shoulder as he tried to leave. There was a little quarrel between them. Ginkgo himself was unable to kill Diabolic immediately. As soon as Diabolic saw Eva coming from behind, Eva appeared and punched Ginkgo in the leg, giving him time to escape. Some time later, Diabolic and Eva are sighted sailing in the middle of the ocean. Shortly after, Diabolic comes along and gives her the red diamond ring that originally belonged to her, but unexpectedly she throws it into the sea, saying that all she wanted was himself. Told. A long time passed and Diabolic was seen climbing a building and stealing a golden crown called the Armand Crown that was kept there. Meanwhile, she was the only security guard on duty at the time, and the others were playing cards in her office. Diabolic succeeded in paralyzing the jailers with his throwing knives, and when the alarm went off indicating that the crown had been stolen, the guards rushed to see what had happened. I had a hard time opening the door because the keyhole was blocked by a Diabolic. This gave Diabolic enough time to take her crown. Guards had to blow up the door, but Diabolic managed to escape in a paraglider with the crown in his hand. The guards realized that the flying man was Diabolic. In the meantime, Diabolic landed safely and got into the car Eva had picked him up. A show was then held, showing the place attended by many nobles and commoners. The show included dancing with poor jewelry by the dancers. Police were stationed around the venue in case Diabolic showed up to steal the jewels. During the show, all eyes were on the beautiful dancers wearing Amen jewels, but suddenly the lights went out and the dancers were immediately ordered into police custody. By this time all the other police officers had fainted. The dancers continued to obey police orders, unaware that anything had happened. The police turned out to be Diabolic in disguise with a self-made mask. As a result, Diabolic managed to steal the Armand Jewel by kidnapping the dancers and dumping them in a deserted street. Afterwards, the dancers went to a bar for help. There, one of the visitors made fun of one of the dancers, who turned out to be an undercover agent being paid to get information about Diabolic. Then she used the bar phone to call none other than Inspector Ginko. She reported to Ginko that Diabolic had successfully taken the bait. Throughout the show, it turns out that everything that happened was Ginko's plan to capture Diabolic. Ginko dipped the Amen Jewel into a liquid, later revealed to be using a tool prepared by Ginko and his companions. In addition, Ginko and the others have started a mission to find Diabolic's whereabouts by making full use of the tracking device. In addition, Ginko instructed his subordinates to bring back the dancers. The search continued until radar stopped on the road next to a stone cliff. Confused by the lack of signs pointing to a specific hiding place, Ginko continues to analyze the location. Meanwhile, Diabolic and Eva continued to stare at the loot they had collected. Later, Diabolic attempts to kiss Eva to show her affection, but the two are shocked by CCTV footage shortly afterwards. The police have successfully blown up a secret passage leading to the hiding place. The two debated whether to flee immediately or try to save the loot Diabolic had amassed. Shortly after, they were spotted escaping from a secret escape tunnel leading into the forest, but Diabolic somehow decided to stay away from Eva and tried to save himself while Eva managed to save Ginko and the others. I had to save myself from the cops. She desperately jumped off a cliff into the river. Meanwhile, Ginko believes Eva will help her out a lot, as Eva may want to testify in court after Diabolic cheated on her. Ginko started looking for what was in Diabolic's space. The stolen treasures that Diabolic has collected turn out to be fantastic, including rare paintings, gold, jewelry, and other valuables. Around that time, Ginko found a blueprint for another location owned by Diabolic and rushed to that location. As soon as they arrived, one of the officers happened to find his way to the hiding place. This is where Diabolic made all the masks to his credit. Ginko planned to station his men there to ambush Diabolic if he appeared, so he immediately ordered his men not to touch or take away the items there. I saw an aristocratic woman named Althea arriving at an airport somewhere. 
she wore rare and beautiful jewelry and went to town for a meeting. She was uneasy about expecting Inspector Ginko himself to accompany her. She then went to the police station to find Ginko, who turned out to be her lover. When the two met, Altyre immediately asked Ginko to propose, but Ginko explained that he had one goal in his life that he had yet to achieve, to capture the genius thief Diabolic. It was made. Altyre tried to understand Ginko's words that he would propose if he caught Diabolic. That night, several police officers were stationed at Diabolic's hideout, but Diabolic showed up as expected from Ginko. He used tools to try to eavesdrop on conversations going on in his hiding place through walls. Meanwhile, the guards were replaced at that point. The place was guarded by a police officer named Agent Lawler. Agent Lawler was alone, so it was a good opportunity for Diabolic to attack him. Diabolic suddenly appeared in front of the door. Lawler quickly took out his gun and started shooting at Diabolic, but it turned out to be just a mirror, just a reflection of Diabolic. He managed to get into the rollers and immobilize him. After the shooting, the other police officers guarding outside rushed in, but unfortunately only Laura was found, who lost consciousness and witnessed Diabolic bring out the mask printing machine. Was the incident was a great disappointment for Ginko, as his men failed to capture Diabolic. Ginko had to confront the minister to obtain orders to locate Eva in order to cooperate in finding Diabolic's hiding place in exchange for Eva's freedom. At the same time, the minister managed to contact Eva and come to an agreement, but he did not fully agree with this, as Ginko also wanted to put Eva in prison. He then called her and asked one of her men to ask where she was. They managed to track her down, but upon her arrival Eva manages to escape through a manhole just below her phone booth. Meanwhile, at Diabolic's hideout, the police, led by Sergeant Elena, searched Diabolic's loot, but at that point Armin's collection of bracelets was missing. Ginko suspects Eva of stealing the bracelet and immediately orders his men to track Eva down using her tracking device. Ginko's suspicions were spot on. Eva was using a bracelet. Shortly thereafter, Sergeant Palmer and Agent Lawler tracked down her location in Eva and attempted to capture her. Laura tried to fight her alone but she was no match for her. He got stuck easily and Eva managed to escape. When Ginko arrived, Laura only smiled as she managed to retrieve the Amen Collector's bracelet from Eva's hands, as it would have been much more difficult to find her if Eva hadn't used the bracelet. Which was a problem for Ginko. At Diabolic's secret base. Elena was helped because Laura agreed to help investigate all the stolen treasure. Meanwhile, Ginko is reprimanded by the minister for ruining the mission by doing extra work. So, whether he wanted to or not, the minister presented Ginko with an ultimatum that he would be impeached if he didn't comply, and Ginko had to work with Eva to capture Diabolic. In the end, Ginko is forced to do so by announcing through the newspaper that Eva's wish will be fulfilled, which means she will not be punished. Eva and Ginko finally have a meeting inside the building. Eva said she was heartbroken for being left behind and that she was now planning her revenge. Eva planned to confiscate Diabolic's stolen goods to provoke him, she said. Diabolic doesn't want the police to confiscate all his stolen property, so he may come back to retrieve his loot. Inspector Ginko began planning to prepare an armored car as a decoy to lure Diabolic out of hiding, while transporting the actual treasure in a regular transport vehicle. Ginko has prepared a force to secure the armored car, and the persuasiveness of the armored car will increase even further. Meanwhile, Sources confirmed that information about the seizure of stolen assets from Diabolic had been secretly circulated, and Diabolic was expected to be aware of this information as well. A scene of Ginko and Althea was drawn. Althea once again asks Ginko to propose. Ginko felt a sliver of hope in catching Diabolic and asked Altire to wait a little longer. Althea then hired a makeup artist to add extra glamour to the event she wanted to attend. A brief scene was then shown of Altire keeping a rare necklace in her closet. Ginko's plans began immediately. Many special forces were already preparing for the mission, and Lawler, feeling guilty about making a mistake in guarding Diabolic's lair, volunteered to drive a loot-carrying vehicle. He knew the mission would be difficult as he might face Diabolic. At that moment, a brief scene of Elena sneaking into the van that Laura is supposed to be driving is shown. Ginko's plan is finally set in motion. With numerous armed guards guarding the truck, the armored truck eventually emerged from hiding. Shortly thereafter, the van Lawler was driving also left the scene from the other direction. Shortly after, the armored transport rammed into the tunnel. Shortly after, 
they were blocked by a gate blocking their way, and paralyzing gas erupted from the tunnel, knocking the special forces unconscious. A figure was seen emerging from the tunnel wall, but it turned out that the special forces were only pretending to faint, and they immediately rushed to capture the mysterious figure, but the mysterious figure after catching the figure, it turned out to be a dummy. Meanwhile, in another location, Althea finds her necklace missing from the location. When Laura arrives in the woods in a transporter loaded with loot, Eva is waiting for him with Althea's necklace, but it is also Diabolic who has brought the car, disguised as Lola with a self-made mask. Ricefield. Finally all became clear. It turns out that this was all Diabolic's plan. He prepared this plan mere seconds before leaving the base in the first ambush. He intentionally made Ginkgo think he had left Eva behind, but in reality Eva escaped through a crevice in an underwater cliff. Suddenly, they are both shocked by Elena emerging from the van. At that moment, she turned her gun on and successfully shot Diabolic. She explained that she suspected Laura, who had previously volunteered to take over her van, because Elena knew Laura wasn't that kind of person. At that time, Eva distracted Elena from her, and Diabolic attempted to stun Elena with the handle of his knife and paralyze her. In the end, Diabolic and Eva managed to trick Ginkgo by bringing back all the stolen items. Ginkgo couldn't do anything because he couldn't catch Diabolic. In order to give his aristocratic girlfriend a good chance to propose, he missed a chance for a promotion, but Althea didn't care at the time. End. Conclusion, in a thrilling game of cat and mouse, Diabolic's cunning and strategic brilliance kept the police, led by Inspector Ginkgo, on their toes. With Eva Kant by his side, the elusive thief managed to outweat the authorities, leaving them in awe of his skills and determination. The chase may have ended with the return of stolen items, but Diabolik's legacy as a mastermind robber remained intact, leaving Ginkgo and the police to wonder if they would ever catch him for good. Please comment.